know that Hanover Park is, is ridden with crime and, and, and drugs and stuff, you know. But for me, it was home, you know, you almost, you, you the this, this situation becomes normalized when you're there. So for, for me to walk around and uh, see people on the street, like a, a guy that was drunk from last night, still sleeping on the street or something like that, it's, it's pretty normal, you know. It's only when you leave Hanover Park, when you realize how abnormal we were and how abnormal we are in that uh, in the system there. Until I found okay, and we started smoking buttons. That's when right. things went a little bit south because um, you start smoking at the age of 11, 12. Yes. And you just, you, it's like if you guys, if you smoke now, you, it's like you get a little buzz and you, know, you could still go on with your life. But at that age, you, sh you yes. fuck, bro. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Have one joint. And you're all laying on the floor and you're just eating and the yeah. So school kind of stopped. I stayed out of school once for three and a half months. Going to school always it took me about 30 minutes. A walk that would be for you, for anybody, probably seven or eight minutes. It took me just over 30 minutes to get to school because I couldn't walk like that. I had to go all the way into Lansdowne Road, walk all the way up Lansdowne Road because you had to dodge the wildcats dodge the Americans. These are gangs. Or so, everything that we can mention about gangsterism, there will be a line and the one thread through all of them would be drugs. Hmm. So that, that's, that's what um, I think gangsterism is the main drive. But then you get all the societal things like, oh, we're all thrown in together hmm. into one, um, we're all thrown into this one big, pot and we can just and everybody's living on top of each other and so it was always a war there was always the, this club wouldn't allow kids to come in from with drugs if, the, if you were high already they wouldn't allow you to come in because you must buy you know so there was always a, mm. a and there was always fights and these bouncers used to fight with the bouncers from the other club so it was you know just mayhem because no bullshit anymore we were all uniformed they knew mm. that don't mess with this club because you got like pro security, you know? So yeah, because we had, uh, so that if nobody would mess with the clubs, bouncers didn't, weren't fighting amongst each other. Everybody got their piece of the pie, you know? So that was a fun time. But you know what I didn't realize was, I'm just a gangster again, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Different environment, gangster again. Why not celebrate it, you know? Why not celebrate who we are? We are not homogenous in any way. But I mean, come on, you know? Um, yeah. I'm not saying you must choose a side. I'm not saying choose white or choose black or like, I, I believe that it works like my, my primary identity is that I'm human, you know? Mm -hmm. And then second, secondly, I am a uh, male. Then only am I South African. And then if you want to identify a broader identity of me, I'm colored because that mm -hmm. is w what I identify with, you know? And I told her, okay, come, let me show you where I, I grew up. You know, she wanted to see it. And I remember as we were driving, we were driving through it, and, and I'm talking to her, like, okay, and this, I mean, but I'm looking ahead, and then I look to my left, and I just see snot and trana. She's like, <laughs> snot, and I'm like, Shame. what's going on? And she like, she's like, burst out. She couldn't believe that people could live like this. Now, we did a soup kitchen. We fed about 250 people. Hmm. And it's not much. We bought like 40, 50 loaves of bread and, you know, we had people working with us. And then it just, so you can't stop, of course. You know, you did one week and then next week and people stop. So then from the soup kitchen, we saw this crash. And the crash was in the old church that my dad had. And hmm. it was winter when we got here. Bro, there was not, they didn't have nothing on the floor. It was a cement yes. floor. So hmm. imagine 60 kids in these little rooms. And then we... We went, went to some friends and said, please, we've got a friend that owns a carpet company and he put in carpets and then we got, we got some um, heaters. And yeah, so just every week we bought more and more and we got books and stuff. So they sit now. I mean, they so sit that we actually want to move on to another area to help another crash now because there's nothing more we can give them, you know? Yeah. And we're so happy about that. If you see the before and after pictures, it's amazing. So that's, that's good. That's on its way. I do believe, obviously, that's where it starts. Help the kids, you know, kids first.